Hello everyone and you're welcome to today's tutorial. What we're going to learn is how to use the isometric tools in Affinity Designer. It's going to be extremely similar to version 1 or version 2 and we'll use that to create some basic isometric blocks as you can actually see in this uh, in this window. So we have a nice little block here, we have this uh, blocky shape and we have this nice little plane. Let me go ahead and turn on the grid by going to view and click in show grid and you can see these isometric planes here i have a uh, isometric toolbar and i'm on the top if i click the side and the front we can see the side and the front of this so i'll show you how to set this up and then we'll have a practical example where we can create a basic cube i plan to do another scene that's slightly more complex but you can see how you can use this to create isometric designs all right, so let's begin by creating a new document. So first, let's go to File, hit New. And here, I'm going to go to Web. And you should see the full HD, 1080p. It's a really nice resolution to work with. I'm just going to change the DPI to 300 so I can get a nice um, high pixel density. And you can actually see we have the grid showing already. If you don't want to see the grid, all you need to do is go to view and here click on show grid the shortcut is control and comma or command comma if you're on the Mac and you can bring out this grid so there are two ways you can bring out the isometric design first we can go to the grid and axis if we go to view and right here where it says grid and axis we can click on that and this should show us our grids and snapping axis. Here we have some presets. I'll just click uh, the drop down, and here we can see isometric. So I'll just click on that, and you can see here we have the isometric setup here. If we turn down here and just go down to the bottom, we can see our grid lines, and this is where you can change the color of your grid lines to something much more visible and you can drag down the opacity so I'll just set it like that and not make that too transparent what we can do is to change the axis usually there are different kinds of perspective axes so for the first axis I'll just set this to 30 degrees so I'll just click on that and set this to 30 and let's just close that so we can actually see our axis settings another way to bring up the setup for the perspective planes because we have a top front and side is to go to window and we should find isometric so once we click on that we can see our isometric here and by default it's on the top so if we click on this this is the side and if we click on this one that's the front so i'll just go back to get to the top and if you click on this you can see that same grid and uh, axis uh, grid and snapping axis pop up again so it's really handy to have this open in fact i'll just float this and just drop it here so we can easily select any of these uh, planes we are working with so with that selected what we also need to do is to set up snapping to make it uh, easier it's really nice to create isometric designs where you can snap to any of these planes so to do that over here on the magnet icon that's the snapping click the drop down arrow and you should have these settings here snap to object geometry snap to pixels and snap to object bounding boxes also make sure you turn on snap to grid and all these other settings they might not be highlighted that's because we don't have a uh, little shape here so i'll just hit the pen tool so now we're going to start drawing an isometric uh, shape to do that you can either use planes or any of the uh, tools so you can see you can just draw a nice little plane like that click over here and click here that's our shape and what we want to do is just fill it here so I like using the swatches and here not on colors but on grays and not gradient on gray and I can just pick this value and say so this is going to be my top I can use the navigator to just zoom in 
and we can just move around. So you can see the more we zoom in, the more we see that pixel concentration. So let's select the node tool. Now we want this to snap. So again, we can now click here and click on enable snapping. That's going to make it highlighted. So now if we go over here and pick the pen tool again and try to draw, you could actually see these points. And each of these points is just telling you, hey, we want this to snap to that specific location. So for instance, if you wanted to create one here, so we have another snap here, snap like that. So you can see it's snapping to each of these points, like so. And that's uh, misaligned here. We have a misaligned snap. To fix that, let's just click on the node tool. We can just drag it over here, and you can see it snaps back just like that. So let's make this like that and just fill up this shape. You can, if anytime you want to make changes, you can select this. Now, this is the top of our object. How do we create the sides? So to simply change, uh, create the side, let's go over here and say side. Now you can see our axis planes have actually changed. So we can now start creating our shape. So one way to measure this is if we go back to the top, we can use this square to just eyeball it. So we have one, two, three, four. We have four blocks. That's what we use. We use four blocks to draw this square. So on the side, we're going to use four blocks. So instead of using the pen tool, you can just use the rectangle uh, tool. So I'll click on the rectangle tool. And right here, I'm actually selecting this shape. I don't want to select anything. So you can press escape to deselect any selection. And now we are going to start here like that. And let's just to draw this. So we go one, two, three, and four. So we could just draw this like that. And I kind of noticed our initial shape did not snap to that edge. So let's see if we can actually uh, fix that. So what I want to do, so now that I have this, you can see we have two shapes here. So let's hide this one, go to the node tool, select this one, and just drag it and make sure it snaps to this edge. That's great. And also we want this to snap to this edge and we want this to snap to that edge. I believe that's fine. We can also fix this. Yeah, I believe that's totally uh, great, really helps. So uh, let's get back and turn on this one and let's give it a different value. So I'll make this slightly brighter just to differentiate that. And here with the node tool, we could just drag this edge to the side here. All right, good. So now we've done the sides we can easily create the other side by just dragging and duplicating this shape. So I'll hit Control J to duplicate that shape and I'll press V to switch over to the Move tool and we can just move this edge over like that. And we just drag this to ensure that, hey, look, it snaps right here. So great. We can create this front side and then duplicate it and then finally we can create the top so let's go ahead and create the uh, front so if i hit the front here we can actually see the shape change to this uh, front section and by doing that sometimes you realize i'm not really we haven't really created this shape in the proper uh, plane so we might want to actually fix some of that uh, issues so we just drag this here and also drag this here to just make sure it snaps with this object. But we're not going to really look at making it super perfect. So let's just uh, undo that. But this is just telling us that we have a slight uh, little problem here because the isometric lines are parallel, right? They are parallel lines, so they don't cross each other. And basically this is showing that we are going to meet 
somewhere so I'll just fix that go over here and drag this put the snaps to this edge like that and we can see that from here make sure we're on the node tool and just drag this so one way we can have access to each individual point is to convert this plane into a curve so i'll just hit convert to curves now we can easily just drag any of these to fix the issues we have so i'm just dragging this right here and i believe it's slightly uh, better right now so yeah like i said we don't want to strive for perfection but we can just change each of these to a curve so we can have access to every um now because we made this we're using the pen tool we didn't have any issues but we might need to readjust these when we create them so let's go ahead and create the top so we have the top shape here and we could just fix this and also fix this one So we just leave it there. I'll just undo just to make sure we have. Okay, good. So let's create the top. So just use the rectangle tool again and start from this point, draw it up to here and then drag this shape here. And I'll hit convert to curves so we can have so just snap to this edge. So here we have a little empty uh, box, sort of. So let's make this the brightest part. So we'll just select this. So that's the brightest. And then this side is going to be the darkest. So we'll just draw, darken this uh, part here slightly. And if we wanted to show the insides, we'll just make this one slightly dark. And then for this one, we could just slightly brighten that as well. Like that. So we have a very rough isometric shape it's not really perfect we can really make it perfect if we work with the pen tool shapes and make sure we enable those snappings make sure this is selected and we can even turn on snap to baseline grids and gaps and sizes it can actually pretty much uh, help All right, so now that we have that, we can hit control and comma and actually get rid of that. One way to add some nice little detail to each of these uh, faces is to, uh, let's go ahead and zoom in actually, because when you zoom in, you get to see some of those issues and errors you have on each of these planes and faces. For example, we can actually see that this plane here like that all right cool so let's see how we can add some basic little detail to this shape nothing too uh, complex so if we wanted to make this more realistic we could add some shading to it so first i'll select the top and i'll go to the uh, gradient tool and i'll just drag a nice little gradient like that and here i'll just drag these handles so it just shows me that the light is coming from the top, but I just prefer to, you know, kind of like use that. So let's hit V for the move tool. And let's make this slightly darker because that's the side 
that's away from the light and let's hit the gradient tool again and let's just drag this from top to bottom like that we can even set an angle for the gradient but i'll just like leaving it like that nice so you can see we by just doing that we have created a nice little fall off for those faces we can even select the inner face inside and hit the gradient tool but there are different kinds of gradients i just use this one and i'll just drag this and we can just make this as large as we want so we can just increase the form of there so one thing we also want to do is to ensure that we actually group all our shapes so we can kind of like make it make sense so i'll select this curve here and let's just hold shift select hold shift and select this this will select everything i want to exclude this shape here so i'll just click on that and i'll hit ctrl g to group everything out there and let's just call this our box nice so we have a little box now what we want to do we can do a lot of things because this is in a group now for example we can we can add textures we can add color we can also change the overall um, lightness or darkness on this object so if i click on this adjustments and i go to shadows and highlights just drag this to this all right and you can see i can play around with this you can see we're having more of the shadows there and i can bump this to add more of the highlight or dump uh, drop it down just add a little contrast to this object and it's only going to affect the content in this group another cool effect i like to use another cool adjustment is to use the colorize recolor sorry so with recolor you can change this to any color you want and adjust the saturation so i'll just desaturate this a bit and let's make this look like a nice little cardboard box like that yeah i believe something around red or orange should give us what we want Yeah, we can see we have slight little variation here and we can also use the lightness or darkness to basically brighten this uh, design we have here. All right, so and the cool thing is now this recolor adjustment is not in our box group. We can always open up our adjustment layer. I'll just drag this here so we can have more space so this is our box group but our recolor is outside so we can drag our recolor inside like that and you can now see everything is within this group so uh, in our next uh, tutorial on how to use the perspective grid we'll be able to look at a much more complex way and we'll create a slightly complicated example just to see how we can create an object and we haven't discussed on the issue of curves like that so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next quick tutorial